In this part of the lesson, we'll look at how to use a for next loop to count through the index numbers of the objects in a collection. Let's start by opening up the file that I've downloaded and extracted. In this workbook, we have a collection of eight worksheets and each worksheet has a corresponding chart which plots the data of that sheet in a simple column chart. What I'd like to do is make changes to each of the eight charts, but without writing the same code eight times. What we'll do is head into the Visual Basic Editor and create a new subroutine in a new module called Count Through Charts. So we can insert a new module and then a new subroutine called Count Through Charts. Now we can declare a variable which will keep track of how many charts we've processed. I'll call the variable chart num and set its data type to be integer. We can then use that variable to count through the numbers of charts. We can say for chart num equals one, two, eight. And then a couple of blank lines before we say next chart num. If you're not sure how many items are in the collection or the number of items in the collection is likely to change, you could use the count property of the collection rather than hard coding the upper limit of the loop. So instead of saying from one to eight, we could say from one to this workbook dot charts dot count. To make this loop slightly easier to read, you may prefer to store the count of charts in a variable. Let's declare a new variable called chart count as integer, dim chart count as integer. We can then store the number of charts in the collection by setting chart count to be equal to this workbook.charts.count. I'll just cut and paste this to make it easier and shorter and simpler. And then we can change our loop to say for chart num equals one to chart count. You can refer to an object in the collection that you're counting through using the loop counter variable. For our example, we're counting through the charts collection. So let's reference the charts collection and then in a set of parentheses, refer to the chart num counter variable chart num. Once we've done this, we can reference any of the methods and properties of that object. So I'm going to refer to the chart type property and let's change that so that all of the charts become 3D stacked column charts. I can make the chart type property equal to Excel chart type and then look for the Excel 3D stacked column or column stacked, I should say. There we go. You may find it easier to use a variable to refer to the object that you want to manipulate. Let's declare a variable that can hold a reference to a chart object. I'll say dim ch as chart. Within the for next loop then, I can set a reference to the chart object that I want to refer to by saying set ch equals charts chart num. In the next line of code, I can then replace the reference to charts chart num by referring to my variable instead. One advantage of doing this with charts is that I also get access to the IntelliSense. If I say ch dot, I can now easily see which methods and properties I have access to. So ch dot chart type. This technique can be helpful when you want to apply multiple methods or properties to the same object. Let's add some code to change both the chart style and bar shape properties of the chart. We can say ch dot chart style. So rather than having to reference charts chart num again, we can simply use our variable. The chart style is simply set to a number. I'm going to arbitrarily pick number 26. And then we can also apply a different bar shape. So I can say ch dot bar shape equals. And then I'm going to choose. Let's go for Excel cylinder. Feel free to choose a different one if you prefer. At this point, I'm simply going to run the subroutine and then check the results back in Excel. So we should see this time that all of our charts, one after the other, have all been changed to the same style and bar shape. At this point, you can either continue with the extra practice session at the end of this part of the lesson or move on to the next part of the lesson, which explains how to use a for next loop to count through cells.